When it comes to processors, there are two different types that dictate exactly how instructions are interpreted and processed, RISC and CISC. Just a quick thing to note, the words RISC and CISC will be used a lot, so to make it less confusing I'll put all subtitles concerning RISC as red, and all those to do with CISC will be blue. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. This is where the processor only deals with and interprets instructions that serve one purpose. Meanwhile, CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computing, where the instructions that the processor deal with don't usually serve one purpose, but instead break down into multiple simpler instructions known as microcode. The difference means that RISC processors can complete a full instruction within a single clock cycle which allows these types of CPUs to use pipelining. Pipelining is where multiple instructions at different stages can be run at the same time on a CPU. This means that while an instruction is being executed, the one after it is being decoded and the one after that is being fetched from memory. Doing these simultaneously means that the different parts of the CPU spend less time overall being idle thus attempting to make efficient use of the resources given. However, the fact that each CISC instruction carries out a broader purpose means that it's easier to program in assembly language, but also doubles to allow the same instruction to be interpreted in different ways depending on the context in which they are used. RISC, on the other hand, benefits when it comes to efficiency. The simpler instructions can be interpreted only one way, meaning that there is generally less steps needed to do the same thing as the decoding process isn't as complicated. This in turn reduces power consumption and improves efficiency. However, while RISC benefits on processing efficiency, it lacks in RAM space efficiency. Often it takes more instructions to do the same thing in RISC than it does in CISC. And while a CISC instruction may take up slightly more room than a RISC instruction, it can do more overall, meaning that less CISC instructions need to be used. Here is an example of this in action. The two bits of code do exactly the same thing, except the CISC takes up 7 bytes, while the RISC takes up 8 bytes. So to put it simply, RISC trades memory space for efficiency, while CISC sacrifices efficiency for memory space. The thing is that the whole RISC versus CISC thing has never been a competition, as it isn't a case of which one you should buy over the other, as both of them have a field in which they are the dominant CPU type to use. RISC CPUs are typically used in small, compact devices such as mobile phones and tablets, while CISC is the usual go-to for servers, desktops, and laptops. AMD and Intel usually produce CISC, while Qualcomm and ARM are known for RISC. RISC is best suited to work in devices such as smartphones because of the aforementioned lower power draw, as the typical mobile phone user would want their phone to last a full day on a full charge, while users of a desktop or server don't really have this expectation. The same could be said for heat output. The lower clock speed associated with RISC and subsequently lower voltage means that it produces less heat, which could easily be dissipated by the metal casing of a phone. Desktops don't have nearly as much of a need to restrict heat output as you can fit a heat sink inside to do the cooling instead. The die of a RISC CPU is also in most cases smaller, which makes it more useful for compact devices where space is a big issue. So that is RISC versus CISC in a nutshell. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe for more. Possibly share it with friends if you want to teach them about RISC versus CISC. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week for another video.